Now, we've seen a push by a number of Republican-led legislatures to ban certain books from schools. But of the same voices who cry out against cancel culture, they don't seem to have a problem with those moves. Molly Jong Fast has been covering this for The Atlantic, where she's a contributing writer, and she joins us now. So, Molly, uh, sort of draw the line of the hypocrisy that you see here. Well, it's pretty spectacular, right? You have the people <laughs> who are defending Joe Rogan, who are saying that cancel culture is wrong, who have basically run on this idea that their people are being canceled, right? And they are not saying anything when Mao's, which is a Pulitzer Prizing book, Pulitzer Prize winning book, is removed from a library, from a curriculum, or all of these other books are disappearing from Texas libraries. I mean, there's real censorship going on in America, but the conservative cancel culture warriors aren't interested in it because it's censorship that conservatives are doing. Mm-hmm. Molly, uh, this is Gene Robinson. Did you find anybody on the conservative side, any prominent uh, conservatives who are who are speaking out on this issue, or is it just a wall of silence? I mean, for now, there haven't been. Conservatives have just sort of ignored this. Now, there may be. I would love to see it, and it would be great if you could get someone like a Barry Weiss or one of these people who have fought so hard for Joe Rogan, who is a multimillionaire with the big contract and lots of success, would fight so hard for these books that are, um, you know, books in libraries and that children want to read. Uh, I wish that there was that same kind of passion for, for actual censorship. Yeah, you know, and, and it's so interesting also. There's a, also, Molly, uh, it's, it's extraordinary hypocrisy or maybe just stupidity. I, they, could, they could tell us whether they're hypocrites or whether they're stupid. This, this sort of uh, this blurring of the lines between free market decisions— uh, which, of course, as me, as a small government conservative, I kind of like the free market. I like businesses to be able to do what they want to do. And then what's done in public space in libraries? Spotify. Spotify has the right to cancel anybody they want to uh, cancel uh, if they think it's in their corporation's best interest. They're, same with their, say, their bottom line. I remember the freak out on Dr. Seuss's family? I hope... Mm-hmm. You know, after I die, if my kids have a chance to destroy every Morning Joe episode that I was ever on, I hope they'll destroy it. Like, let them do it. Because if they somehow can buy the rights to this to destroy it all, I want them to. So they don't have to live with that shame throughout their lives. But but they're, they're like, oh, wait, well, the Dr. Seuss family doesn't have a right to, to, to decide what's best for to protect their legacy. That's cancel culture. Spotify doesn't have the right to do, make their decisions. Uh, tech companies don't have the right to make their decisions. The government should step in and, and take over these companies. And yet libraries at schools mm-hmm. in public spaces, yeah, they're, they're banning these books. And we hear them say nothing about that. You talk about a, sort of an upside down world with these these conservative hypocrites. This is it. Mm-hmm. And book banning is low-hanging fruit for them, right? Because we have a Republican Party where primaries are very, very Trumpy now, and we have this kind of performative Trumpism. So book banning is very easy for them, right? Because there are a lot of conservatives, religious people, who've always sort of had a little bit of a thing for book banning. So this is a very easy win for these conservative uh, primary candidates. And so you're seeing that, and you're also seeing these parent tip lines where parents can complain about the kids, about the uh, teachers, which is another kind of academic freedom thing, which is extremely important and which was something that historically these conservative cancel culture people wanted freedom of speech on campuses. Remember that? Yes. Contributing writer for The Atlantic, Molly Jong Fast, thank you very much for coming on the show this morning. We appreciate it. And Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.